One subject I love to get into is uh, the public school system. And I refuse to call it public schools. It's government schools. Exactly. And, people, and, don't, people don't get that. And the reason that, that youngsters aren't taught about the Constitution, even people your age and mine weren't taught well right. about the Constitution. I don't believe they ever made, when I say made us, read all the way through it or present anything based upon us reading it, so, you know, the things that they usually well, do. you know, it, it, I like to say it's, it's about that thick. It's 25 pages, the whole Constitution, and if you had government write it today, it'd be that high off the floor. I got a feeling it'd fill this room. Yeah, it'd fill the room, <laughs> right, you know? right. Uh, no, the Constitution is, is, but the public school system now, uh, I, I like to talk about a fellow named William Z. Foster, all right? You probably never heard of him. You're correct. William Z. Foster was the head of the Communist Party in the United States back in the 1930s. Okay. And he wrote a book called, called Toward Soviet America, all right? And what he did in his book was he said, here's what we have to do to make the United States of America a communist state. This is the game plan we should follow. This is the game plan we should follow. One of his very strong points in that book was we have to have a federal department of education that will cleanse the schools of anything religious and patriotic. Has it been done? Pretty much. Has it, uh, pretty much. Yeah. The schools have been purged. You can't mention God in school. You can't mention, uh, you know, patriotism is out. Uh, ask a youngster today, where do you get your rights? You know, he knows he has his rights. I got my right to speak and publish, and I got my right to do this and that and everything else. Ask him where he got his rights. He'll probably tell you he got them from government. Or he'll say, <laughs> I, I, don't know. Okay, yeah. I don't know where right. I got them from. Yeah? The Declaration of Independence is, is the philosophical base of our country. And that's where you find that uh, very important question answered. Men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. I, we got our rights from God, and therefore no government can, can legitimately take, take them away. Exactly. Right? Now, they can take them away. I said legitimately. They can't legitimately take them away. All right, so there's the philosophical base of our country. And then they said, right after that, they said, to secure these rights, governments are instituted. So now you have everything in its proper order. You have God on top. You have individuals with rights from God. And then we use those rights to form a government for what purpose? Only to protect those rights, nothing more. Not to redistribute the wealth, not to take no control kidding, yeah. of people's lives, not to dominate their very existence and so forth. Just simply to protect their rights. Government should be a negative force, not a positive force. Shouldn't go around doing things for you or for me or for anybody else. It's a negative force. It could keep you from going after me, or right, me going harming. after you, right. or each of us from going after somebody else. And, and negative force of government is what you want. When you get a positive force, where can you find a more positive force in government than a communist state? Right. Well, not just that, and it's centralized. You know, the whole thing. I look at, you know, different individual states, kind of like different individual countries, as firewalls in that New Hampshire here, who are another state. My viewers are mostly down in Massachusetts and stuff. And I like the fact that there's a different state. I don't want, uh, the, you know, I don't That's buy. That's part of the, the genius of the founding fathers. I'm telling you, because you know, it you keeps know control the, local. You know, oh, okay. if, if you ask people today, they, they probably wouldn't realize that the states created the federal government, not the other way around. Right? Yeah, it wouldn't, the, they the wouldn't states have come, existed. Yeah. The states existed. They they had to ratify a constitution before it got it got in place. And and, and the states, well now the, the creature has become greater than its creator, and that's wrong. Right. Right? Exactly. But there are some vestiges of, of the state power still. Most of them have been eroded. Right? Uh, states' rights to me is something that's very, very important. And, and the brilliance of the Founding Fathers was to leave that alone so that there would be competition amongst the states to be the best state, the one where you'd want to raise a family, start a business, and live, and so on. Right? So there are still some vestiges of it. There's one state of the 50 that has neither a sales, state sales tax or a state income tax. Only one of the 50. It's uh, New Hampshire. I'm home. That's it, a, it's it, New Hampshire. It's right? a, yeah. All states have either one of those two types of taxes, or both. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. So, I know the both end of it. So, you know, some vestiges of, of uh, state power still exist, but most of the state's powers have been given away. They go down to Washington. Each state has somebody that goes to Washington, looks for the federal handouts. 
And when they get the hands out and get the money, they get the handcuffs. Yeah, well, of course, right. Well, yeah, the other yeah. thing, too, is that whole redistribution of wealth thought. Um, my, I get to ask you, you know, philosophically, how you feel about whether or not someone, myself, um, anyone here in, in whatever state, owns any part of your labor. No. Is, you, you know, that's why I say the sovereign, when I say the sovereign individual, as you look at everything, gee, the rights of a person and stuff, and how the individual is paramount, paramount, excuse yeah. me, okay? Right. And the state comes below that, you know, where we've flipped, we've gone 180 degrees where, you know, your privacy was number one. Now government secrecy is number one, and your privacy, we should know right. everything about everything you do, how many scary. strands of hair you have. Yeah. And, that's very scary. And where I was going with it is, I, and I try to, you know, wake my audience up to the fact that if you start thinking or even just conceiving that part of your labor is owned by someone else, at what point do they get a bigger part of Right. And then just continue to take. And then at what point are you a free man or a free uh, woman? Uh, America became great because people were able to keep the fruits of their labor. There's never been an incentive to work better than that. And yeah, so oh, exactly. I, and, your and, efforts go right into your wall and you right, get to determine. And so when people found out that that was the case, what happened? You got all kinds of penniless people who left the old world and came here with nothing just to enjoy the fact that they could keep the fruits of their labors. And so we had a generation, a couple of generations of people who worked as, you know, what, what you might call lower class, so forth. And then their youngsters, then they went to schools, and then their grandchildren became lawyers and doctors and professional right. people. Upward mobility. And the people built the schools. Up, upward the, mobility. Right? Yeah. Well, America had the greatest educational system in the history of mankind until the government got involved in it. And it all started in the 18th century, uh, the 19th century, 1800s. But, uh, the, the takeover of education by the federal government began in the 50s under Eisenhower. And uh, it's gotten worse and worse and worse all along. Nowadays, it's got to the point, I, I know people in the educational system, at least down in this very community, um, where you know, they, no child left behind, no child left undrugged. I mean, it, it's getting there in every little aspect. Yeah. You know, and you're not going to get money unless you do what we say in that coerciveness. That's right. Of well, just controlling the strength. You know, it's like puppeteering. That, that phrase, no child left behind, I always think about the indebtedness of the United States. Here we've got a nation that admits to a $9 trillion uh, national debt, and they give away money. I ask a fifth grader if that's a smart thing to do. The fifth grader would tell you, no, it's not a very smart thing to do if you're that much in debt to give away money. I know. But oh, now who's going so to pay? Common sense, yeah. Who's going to pay the debt? Right? All That's the right. children of today. No child will be left behind with the indebtedness of the United Without States. that burden right. placed right. upon them. You hear people talk about all the time. They talk about the mass media, and they think it's a single word. It's not. The single word is medium. Right? Plural is media, and the media includes the radio and the television and the newspapers and the magazines and so forth. All right. So. The John Birch Society is itself a medium of information. What we try to do in the John Birch Society is to get people to realize the, the beauty of our country, the, the constitutional system given us at great cost by our founding fathers, and then who is undermining it, who's hurting it, who's going to destroy the future if we don't stop them. And so the John Birch Society became controversial because we started fingering people. We started saying, this politician is doing the wrong thing. This fellow is doing the wrong thing. And this is going to hurt and future generations. And it's going to hurt future yeah. generations. Now, we also say that there are only three alternatives here. Either they're, they're totally misinformed and, and, and stupid. Correct, yep. Or they're deliberately doing what they're doing. Correct. Or uh, the third alternative is that they never got any information at all, and they can't operate on information without information. So uh, the second of the alternatives is that they know what they're doing, and they continue to do it. 